I'm Jenny. Welcome to my channel where we focus on using ordinary materials to make beautiful things. Today we're going to kind of revisit something that's old-fashioned. Um, everything old is new again, right? Uh, we're going to look at some salt dough ornaments, only we're not making Christmas ornaments, which is maybe how you remembered them um, from being a kid. I know there were years where we made salt dough, uh, can't even talk, salt dough ornaments and we put cinnamon in them and they smelled good and we cut them out with Christmas things and we painted them, you know, with temper paint and made little trees and things like that. And we hung them on our Christmas tree and, and I know I did the same thing with, with my daughter when she was young. Um, I still have a few of those ornaments. They've, they've hung around for many years now. She's 27, so they've been here a while. Um, so today, I thought we'd maybe think about how we could use the salt dough in a different way. And so I have already prepped some salt dough and cut some things out and I wanna talk about why I did what I did and then we're gonna do a project with, with one of them. So you can see I cut out a variety of shapes. This is, I'm not sure it all fits in the, in the frame, but there are lots, lots of little pieces here to play with. And I chose each of them for a specific reason. <clears throat> First, I want to I want to look at some, these. So, and there's some little ones too. When I was in uh, one of the craft stores the other day, I noticed one of the things they had for embellishments. Uh, they had like little some wooden rosettes and things like that, and then they had some that were made out of plaster. Um, that you could paint and, and do things to and then use them as an embellishment on something, maybe to make a pin or maybe in the center of a bow or something like that. So they they were expensive. I will not lie to you. <laughs> they were, it was like $5 for two. And, and while they're cute, I don't think they're that cute. Um, so I was thinking initially, how could I replicate something like that? And so it occurred to me that if I used salt dough in a mold, that it would look like that. And, and it does for the most part. Um, my mold was a little deep because it's a candy mold. Uh, so I used silicone candy molds uh, to make this. And I have other shapes, but these were the ones that looked more like what I saw in the store. So there's a couple different flower shapes. Uh, they're maybe not quite as distinct as some of the other ones would be, although some of them are better than others. Um, right, so this one I think is a little better. But they're, you know, they're not a bad facsimile because salt dough is made from flour, salt, and water. That's all that's in it. So it's very inexpensive, and it made a lot of them. Um, and so my plan is to try to paint some of those uh, and, and maybe give them a patina. So I'd like to paint them. I'm thinking like maybe I'll paint them a paler color and then go in with a paint marker and do some darker work around here and then maybe rub some gold on top, that kind of stuff. So those are the kinds of things that I'm thinking that I could do this with. If you have uh, silicone candy molds, these popped right out. They were super easy. I just, I just pushed the stuff in, um, and I used like just a, a small uh, spatula like you use to uh, spread icing on a cake, uh, and I just went across the top to level it out, and then I turned them over and just popped them right out onto my parchment paper. And the dough is, is sturdy enough that it pops out pretty easily. I think if you have some of the candy molds that aren't silicone, some of the older ones that are plastic, I'm thinking if you if you press them in that and then let them air dry, uh, instead of baking them in the oven to dry, that they would probably come out pretty well. I don't know, I didn't try it, that's just my guess. Um, I do have some plastic molds, but I'm in a hurry and I like to bake it and hurry it up. So it took about, the recipe said um, an hour at 300 degrees. Mine took about 50 minutes, so it wasn't quite an hour. Uh, they did puff a little bit, so I'm looking at the back of this thinking this is pretty rough and it's puffed a little, 
But I also think my sanding block will just, you know, take some of that right off. So I will be, I will be using a sanding block on some of them. Um, this one is a little flatter, still a little rough, uh, but I think just a quick, quick hit it with the sanding, sanding block and then a little paint and it should be okay. So that's what kind of inspired the whole thing. And then I thought, well, I like those, but I don't want a bazillion of them because when you make the salt dough, it's meant to make, you know, pretty large ornaments. So it made a lot. <laughs> and I guess I could have made maybe like a, a half or put some of it in a, in a plastic bag and, and saved it. Um, but I decided to go ahead and make some other things that I might, that I might use. So I made some butterfly shapes because I just thought with spring, these would be really fun magnets. So I, I picked things that I thought would might, might make some interesting magnets or some kind of decoration. So I thought the butterfly again, I could hit it with a little bit of sandpaper uh, just, to, just to even it out before I start. But a lot of these, I think rather than just painting them, I'm gonna decoupage on top of them. So I'm, I'm gonna seal them with some glue. I'm gonna put papers of different kinds and colors over them. Then maybe I'll go in with paint pens and draw some things. And then maybe I'll go in with some sequins and beads and trims and things like that. And then finally on the back, I'll, I'll glue on a magnet. Um, and right now I'm trying to figure out what kind of glue to use. So initially my thought is I could use hot glue to put that on, but I feel like hot glue might come off a little easily. So I might dig out like my E6000 or some of my construction glue. Um, I have, I have some, I'm, I'm thinking probably the construction glue. Uh, so just a little dot of, you know, dollop of construction glue with a magnet right there. And I have a lot of friends who are teachers. Um, I was a teacher for 28 years. Uh, and so many, many of my friends, I would guess almost all my friends, not all, but almost all my friends <laughs> are teachers. And so um, magnets are really cute on whiteboards. Uh, so, and filing cabinets and things like that. So I'm thinking I'm, I might make some of these as little spring gifts uh, for some of my friends that I can, that I can send them or drop by and, and give them. So I thought that that would be fun for the butterflies. And I thought the fish, um, they're a little thicker. Really, I should have probably rolled them thinner. This one's better. This one puffed up. So if I can sand it thin enough, that would be good. But I'm thinking about doing um, kind of a, a layout with ocean things. And I thought it would be fun to have fish dimensional that I could that I could put on top of the layout. So they may be a little fat for that, um, in which case I'm, I might have to decide something else to do with them. Um, I think they might be cute, uh, you know, hanging from something, but I, I didn't poke a hole in them before I baked them. So I'm, I'm not sure about the fish. They're, they're not quite meeting the plan I had. The small round circles, after I cut out a bunch of the shapes, I ended up, oops, oh, there goes one. <laughs> I ended up with plenty left, so I just I just cut some circles and squares and things. So these, I thought these would be fun, like you could treat them like a large button um, and then just glue them to the center of a paper flower or something like that. They did come out a little thinner uh, and I think they're, they're puffed slightly, but not nearly as much as the fish are. Um, so I'm thinking those would be fun. You could treat them like buttons. You could do all kinds of stuff to them. You could put something on them. You could use them, you know, these could be magnets too. Uh, any of them, of course, could be a magnet. Um, but I was thinking uh, they have, you know, we have like little tiny images. I was thinking about those bottle cap jewelry images where they put it, they put the cute little image in the bottle cap and then they seal it in. So I was thinking something like that would be fun with this, and then you could put it in the middle of, of a, you know, of a bow. You could put it in the middle of, um, you know, uh, can't even think of what it's called, like a little layer of fabric and stuff. Oh, losing my mind. Um, so you could put it in the middle of a flower. Uh, just You would just treat it like a large button. So I thought those would be cluster. It's a cluster. <laughs> 
do you do that? Do you, you're thinking of something and you're okay and you can't think of the word and then two seconds later or a minute later or whatever, when you stop thinking about it, you find it. I was thinking this would be really cute, like on top of a cluster. Um, so that's, that's my idea for those. And then here are some bigger ones. Uh, and they, they might end up doing the same thing. I just, you know, I thought, well, I'll make some bigger ones too. Not really sure. Um, they might go in an art project somewhere. So I made some, some of the little flowers as well, um, that you could, we could decoupage. Uh, I don't think, you know, these I just want to paint and hit with gold and things to highlight them, kind of patina them. Um, but these, of course, I think I'll probably decoupage something. Um, maybe there'll be some paint. Maybe, you know, maybe it'll be a fun swirl. Maybe there'll be ribbon or lace in the middle of it. And the same thing for the squares. So I thought they would be be fun as well. I thought they might make um, fun little magnets with like faces or animals or something on them, something cute. So the horses are, are the ones I wanna talk about too because I, I saved them for last because this is the project we're gonna work on today. Now the horses, I used a skewer and I poked some holes where the mane and the tail go because after we finish dressing these up, I'm gonna put um, some threads or ribbon or something through there uh, and make a little loop so that it's got a mane, a little ribbon mane. So I'm thinking for these, um, my thought was the art horses that are the statues where they have different artists come in and paint them different ways and you can buy the small statues and and they're all different themes and different colors and they're painted in, in interesting ways. So my thought is these, I would decoupage with interesting papers, like one of them might be a map, like I might use map page to, to cover it and then put some really cool blue green uh, fibers and stuff and you know, that kind of thing. To, to make him a real cool magnet. So I, I want the horses to be magnets for sure, um, much like the butterflies. And I want them to have uh, a mane and, and stuff and to be kind of like those wild ponies. Um, so I was thinking it would be fun uh, to, to decorate those today. Some of them cracked a little, like the tail cracked on this one. I think once I decoupage it and, and clean it up a little bit with some sandpaper. It will be okay. Um, but, you know, if, if we sacrifice one or two of them, it's okay. There's a lot, right? I'm there, I cut out 10 of them, um, hoping to use especially five. I have, I have somebody in mind for, for at least five of them. And then if the other five work out, I'll, I'll give them to somebody else. Uh, but I want, I want at least five of them. So if you, if you make some salt dough, there are lots of recipes online. The recipe uh, is, every recipe I found was the same. The only thing different was the baking instructions. Um, and some of them had a higher temperature and there were people in the comments who complained that they puffed a lot at the higher temperature. So I, as I said, I did mine at 300 um, for just under an hour. So they, they didn't puff too much. There is a little puffing, but not, but not too much. So maybe uh, you might even do a little bit lower temperature. I think if you have the time or you are, have the patience to let them air dry, um, you probably wouldn't get any puffing at all. Um, so if it had been summer, I would have just put them outside um, in the Arizona heat to air dry and let them do that. But because it's, it's not super warm today, um, I thought I thought I'd better put them in the oven and I, I get antsy. So, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off the camera and I'm gonna get my sanding block out and I'm gonna try to like sand down some of the edges and clean up um, some of the puffiness. And then I'll be back and we'll work on some of the horses today. Uh, and we might work on the butterflies a different day or, or some of the flowers, but today we're gonna work on the horses. So I'll be back in a minute uh, with all the materials ready to start those horses. See you in a few. Hi, I'm back. Um, I have sanded down all of the horses. A couple of them, I've gotten a couple little cracks here where I ran my awl through just to make sure that the holes were still open so that I could run the yarn through later. 
But I think uh, because we're gonna decoupage the horses and, and my plan is to take it over the edge and then I can, you know, re repoke that hole. Um, but I'm thinking that the paper and the glue will give it some stability up there because they're not, it's not broken totally, it's just kind of cracked. So I think that should be okay. If it's not, we might lose a couple along the way. But as I said before, um, I made 10 horses hoping to get at least five good ones. So um, we'll, you know, we'll just have to experiment with a couple of them and see. So I have my horses ready. Um, I have my awl to keep, you know, punch those holes through as, as we decoupage. Um, I have my glue. I am using wallpaper and border adhesive. This is available at uh, any of the hardware stores um, like Home Depot, Lowe's. You might be able to get it at Walmart or, or someplace like that as well. I'm, I'm not sure I haven't looked. Um, but I use this because I feel like this does a really good job of sticking paper down. It's meant to stick down heavier things like wallpaper and border. So it, it saturates the paper a little bit. Um, it makes it pretty pliable. You can stick it down and, and it dries fairly quickly. So I have that and I have an old brush um, that I use when I'm gluing so that I can get down in the edges and, and work it around this. So my thought is we would cover the front with decoupage paper and wrap it and then when it's dry, um, I wanna trace it on some other paper, like maybe just brown craft paper or cardstock uh, and cut it out and then cover the back so that the back is covered as well. So then it's really just a matter of what we're gonna cover it with. And I have a 15 or 16 choices here, I'm, I don't know. Um, when I hit several over 10, I just quit pulling them out. It's not going to take very much paper to cover. So, you know, this and maybe a piece here or there, right? So a couple, just a couple little pieces of paper will cover the horse. So I, I don't anticipate it taking much. So there were lots of choices. Um, and it was, it's a little overwhelming really how many choices I had because I just really pulled through, went through my scrap bin. Um, but the good news is, is there are lots of really cool things left to put on the butterflies later. So I thought we'd just kind of look at a few of the things I pulled out and then we'll pick one and start. So this one is actually a piece of paintable wallpaper that has some, some paint kind of swished across it. I was doing a bigger project and, and I made a large sheet and this is the off cut from that. Uh, and it's, it's pretty pliable, but the interesting thing about it is it has a definite texture to it. So I thought that might make, make a fun uh, painted pony. This is a jelly print that was sent to me in Happy Mail. So I thought this was really cool. Uh, this one, we can either you know use this part or we can use the part up here with a, with a different kind of look to it. So the thing is, is this is just gonna show up as texture because it's so big and the, the horse is small. So you're not gonna tell really what it is. You're just gonna see that it's textured. Um, so that's, you know, something to keep in mind, which in this case, I pulled these. These are um, out of a magazine, you can see on the other side. And they're just, it they might be out of a catalog, but they're really thin and it's like a swatch of what a dress would be made out of. So it's, it's a picture of fabric. Um, which I thought was kind of cool. And these are kind of mix and match, although there's probably enough when we cut it apart to do, to do a whole pony in either of them. But they're kind of the same colorway, so I, I doubt that, that I'll do both, um, but one or the other maybe. And then this is um, paint that just kind of was spread across. When I was doing jelly prints, I, I used um, uh, sandwich paper, like deli paper to uh, clean my brayer, to pick up what's left on the plate, um, all of those things, and that's what this is. So this has some silver and some of that color in it. So um, this decoupages really well because it's, it's fairly thin 
and it's easy to get around the thing. So, uh, you know, the thing, get around any corners and things like that. <laughs> Not having, having trouble talking today. So as far as color goes, of, of the three, I probably like this one the least. And then these two, this is more of just kind of a generic sort of painted look and this is kind of a print. So we'll have to decide um, which of those we want. And we could combine them. We could do the horse and, and the jelly paper and then uh, put some of the other on top as, you know, as a accent. Again, this is done on deli paper. Uh, this is an off cut of, of part of a jelly print. I like the color on this. I think it's really pretty. I like that kind of turquoisey. Here's another one. These are pieces of jelly paper. This is an actual book page that uh, is the edge of a, of a, of a uh, jelly print. You see a little bit of a person in here. You can see some texture. So this one might be really fun to use kind of with the me that metallic look to it. So I think those are good choices. I, I really don't want a bunch that are the same color. So if there's several things, we might pick different colors. This again is a picture of fabric. This came from a, a book on quilting. And here's a quilt that has, I, I'm not sure if it has this fabric in it, but it's the same, the same colors. Um, and this too has that color. This is from a catalog and it's a bedspread, but I thought, I thought this print was kind of interesting. So that might make, that might make an interesting something as well. Um, that one's purpley. I like since, you know, I like that. Here's some other um, catalog or book pages that were cut up. I think this is book page with flowers which would be fun, I think, if the, the whole pony, you know, was covered in, in flowers. I think that would be really cute. So that's, I think, definitely pinky. We're going to do that, maybe. Um, this is one that the print's going to be very large, so you're not really going to see it. But I think, given that it's a butterfly, I think you'd be able to tell... Um, that these were butterfly wings on top of this. So I thought that might be a fun way to go. Something a little bit different and interesting. I did bring along uh, some map pieces and some music paper because those are always my go-tos. And then of course I have some packing paper that has paint on it, which I thought might be might be a fun way to go. Um, just because it would look, you know, pretty, pretty rustic, I think. So would be kind of fun, I think. And, and then that would definitely be the pun of the, you know, painted ponies. Um, so I'm pretty sure we'll use at least one of those three options. Again, some more jelly printing in a different color, more green than, than the bluish, I think. Um, I have some book page and with gold paint on it. So I really like this. It was part of a, a jelly print. You can see there's the edges of whatever I printed on it. So this is just kind of the outer edge of the paper. I really love the metallics though. Those are my thing. Um, here's again a, a picture of a quilt, which might be fun. Although looking at some of the other stuff, I, I'm thinking that one's probably not going to be one of the most fun ones. Uh, this is an old calendar page and I love the, the large scale print flowers. I thought that might look really pretty on the horse's body. And then there's this one that's from a magazine. Um, it was a big illustration. It's part of a magazine and, and I've used part of the page already so that's why it's all torn up. Uh, but I love the colors on this. So I just, I just think um, it looks like the setting sun, you know, and I just, I just think something like that over the pony would be really, would be really cool. So we're gonna start with that one because this is one of the ones that I had in mind when I when I chose this project. I wanted to want to be sure to get to use some of that. So gosh, I just keep moving my paper. I'm sorry. I do have um, the parchment paper down still that I that I uh, baked these on. 
because since we're going to be, you know, decoupaging and gluing all the way around, I thought if I just put it on the parchment, I wouldn't have to worry about it sticking. So I don't know. I just want to cut, cut some pieces, tear some pieces. There's no reason to cut them. That's tearing fine. I like, I like this one though. So let's just start with this one on the body. And we'll decoupage a couple, and then I will uh, turn off the camera and finish the rest of them. Uh, and then we'll come back and do the backing. And then we'll finish up with um, finishing touches like any kind of embellishments we want to put on them uh, and, and their manes. So we'll do a couple of these, as I said, on camera, one or two maybe. Uh, and then, then we'll... Um, I'll do it separately and come back to you. So I think it's going to be easier to do really small pieces of the paper because this is a small thing. So I'm going to start with a little bit on the paper and on the horse. This is always messy, so <laughs> I end up with glue all over my finger because I just find that my fingers work better than pretty much anything else. So since this is rounded and, and has a shape, I expect it to, to be a little wrinkled. I'm not worried about the wrinkles. I just want to make sure it's adhered well. So on the back, I'm wrapping it to the back, but we're going to cover, as I said, the back in either cardstock or craft paper or something uh, once we've covered the front. So the idea here is just to cover the front, and then we'll I'll kind of repoke the holes, uh, and then cover the back and repoke the holes. So that's that's the idea. Hope you guys kind of give this a try. I, I think salt dough is fun. Um, it's one of those things that I think is kind of underrated because you can do a lot with it. You, you know, anything, think about any kind of embellishment you could make. Um, you could add something to the dough, like you could add dye to the dough. Uh, it does get a little bit lighter as it dries, so you might want to, you know, go a little darker than you really want it. Um, I think it would be fun. You could embed some glitter in the dough as you're, you know, as you're making it and put some dye in, separate it out, do a few colors, put a little glitter in. That could be, that could be interesting and fun. Well, let me get some glue on this so that it goes where I want it to go. Try not to cover both sides of the hole I poked so that I can see where it is. All right, I want to be able to see where the hole is on the back so that when it's dry, I can repoke it through the front. So that's the idea. A little more glue down in there. So I think, I don't think this is going to be hard. I, I think it's going to be a little fussy because it's small. Um, and I don't mind it kind of, as I said, a little bit wrinkled, folded up under there. Um, I might get a different tool, though. I wonder about getting like a little, a little plastic spatula to get in those edges. I really just want the front and the, the edges covered so that when you look at it, it, it looks like it's covered. From all sides. Oh my goodness, my oh no, <laughs> my paintbrush. <laughs> oh, just fell apart. Dropped into the glue. Okay, well it's always something, isn't it? Oh, I'm gonna have to get another brush because this one is not going to stay together. Okay, let's see if we can make it through this, and then I'll 
stop and get him. Probably about half that. I think this would be really fussy if you wanted a particular design to show. Um, so I think if you want something, a particular something to show, it would probably be best to decoupage um, a background and then do that on top would be, that's just my guess. I mean, I'm not, not saying you couldn't get it to show. Um, maybe you're better at, at decoupaging things than I am. Um, but it is, it does seem to be a little fussy here because of all the angles. And if you chose, if you have something that is um, a little less angular than, than a horse, like if, if we were doing just the circles uh, or maybe even the butterfly because it really, it had wings, but it really only has two large wings this way. You know, it, its shape was kind of like, here's a center solid part and then the wings went out like this. So it didn't have a lot to, uh, to worry about edgewise. It had more of a center. So I think if you had um, something like that, you'd probably have a better chance of, of getting a, a center design on there. But my thought is, is if, if I want a center design, if I look at this and then I think I really want um, one of the trees or something to show, then I'll, I'll put it on um, after I get it wrapped. Like I just, right now, I just want to get it covered. And I'm not worried about how the back looks because we're going to cover that up. So, if it is uneven, it's okay. Several years ago, several, <laughs> at least a decade, maybe longer. Uh, I, you know, I think several years, and then I realized how much, how long that's been. Yeah, um, at least a decade, maybe longer. Uh, I made for Valentine's Day. I made my husband uh, some magnets that out of salt dough that looked like uh, musical notes. I just used a, a music note cookie cutter. And then I painted them and put magnets on the back. And those were, he lived in his classroom for many, many years um, until they actually got knocked off of the whiteboard one by one at different times and, and broke. Um, so they, they lasted, hmm, gosh, I was gonna say, I'm trying to think, it's been at least a decade since I got, I would guess they lasted well over five years. And in a high school classroom, that's that's pretty long life for something like a magnet. <laughs> so they're not, I mean, they're break, you can break them, but, but they're not overly fussy. You know, it's not going to be, it's not going to be like you have to handle it with so much care that you won't get to enjoy it. Uh, so magnets don't typically get a lot of rough housing, um, but, you know, in a classroom, they get knocked off of things. And you know, they, they do well on whiteboard. So if you have an office, um, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to just put them on your refrigerator. Uh, so a whiteboard in your office, um, a filing cabinet, uh, a metal desk. I don't know if anybody has metal desks anymore. Schools have old stuff, so <laughs> there, there are lots of metal desks in schools because we kind of just you know, that's not something that we spend many on, money on to get new things. And and typically we shouldn't, uh, you know, none of us really care. But, uh, you know, teachers have, generally have old metal desks. Um, and so, you know, if you have an old metal desk, 
which I think is okay. I, I had an old metal desk for many years and I really liked it because it held up really well. And you didn't have to worry about hurting it. You know, you didn't have to worry about it. Okay, I'm just trying to see. I want to be sure it goes over that edge. And I don't want it so far over the edge that it covers all of the holes. So I have covered that one. I think even while it's wet, I don't know. I guess I maybe I should wait till it's dry. Mm, I should probably wait till the paper's dry. I'm just afraid I'm not going to be able to see them, but I can I can see them from the back. So I suppose if uh, I don't get the edge quite wrapped, I can always touch it up with a little bit of paint, but that that top edge is going to be uh, covered by fibers anyway, so it uh, it won't be too, okay, we should go this way. <laughs> it's always kind of a trick, isn't it, figuring out which way to go to cover this, so as I said, it's a little fiddly because of the shape, but the round ones now that, you know, those will be easy because we'll be able to kind of do one bigger piece on, on those and then um, just do something in the middle, like almost like a medallion kind of in the middle of it as decoration. So that will be that will be easy. You can see I'm avoiding those because I don't want to cover up the holes because I'm afraid I won't be able to find them again. But I, I think I will. I think I'll be able to find them. Although that's not going to need to cover the edge, don't I? I'm just worried about covering it, but I, you know, the truth is, even if I, even if I cover it, I should be able to find them. So I should just, I should just do this and be done with it. Um, yeah, even I think even if I cover it, I can you can I can feel where they are, so I should be able to repoke those holes just want to make sure i can put sorry i keep pulling this up closer to me and i'm afraid i might be pulling it out of frame um i just want to make sure that i can get those holes back because i really want to put those fibers on for a mane and a tail I want to I want to be sure I have access to do that. And I can pick some pretty threads and lots of embroidery embroidery floss that we could use and I also have some kind of fun yarns, but the hole, the holes are small so they may not the yarns may not fit. We'll have to see. Okay. All right, so we've got that basic color. Um, if we wanted something particular, you know, if we wanted kind of the treetops or something in particular, go on the treetops maybe. thinking if we wanted to make sure right, that the design was there 
now that we've covered it. Well, we could do that if we wanted to make sure that design showed up. I'm not sure on this it matters very much. Um, although, I don't know. I quite like this one that looks... the tree that might be nice coming up the leg mm -mm. I don't know I can't decide whether I really want uh, I think I might like that with the branch maybe I want the branches and then I want that top That's a possibility. I want the tree to show on his leg. Maybe the top of the tree to show here. definitely looks like a tree on top of the other. I don't know, maybe I'd, I don't see any harm in, in putting it on there. Um, I think there'll be other embellishments. I, I think we could go in with a paint pen and add things. Um, and then of course, by the time the mane gets on there, I think that's gonna be the cutest thing this little part of it. We didn't ink these edges, but we could go back and apply, apply a little ink. I'm thinking we'll probably um, rub a little bit of gold or metallic or something on it just to give it a, a little, little sheen, that kind of stuff. Okay, so that's one um, ready to dry. So when it's dry, I will poke the holes. Uh, but I will be back when I have covered them all and probably poke the holes and then we'll do the we'll do the back and then we can work on the main and embellishments. So I'll I'll be back in a few. Hi guys, so I'm back. It's actually the next day because after I finished decoupaging all of the horses, um, I I glued a back on as I had said before. I, I was just gonna trace around some old cardstock or something and put it on there. Um, and I had some trouble getting it to actually fit, so yeah, it's okay. Uh, but after I glued all that together, the dough felt a little soft to me. Um, so I left it overnight to dry. Um, I put a ceiling fan on and closed the, closed the door to my studio and left it to dry. So this morning I have done a couple of horses um, I did this one first because it was my least favorite and, and part of it was broken uh, from, from baking. I had gotten one of the holes a little too close and it cracked, so I had to fix that. And So I thought I would do this one first so that I could learn from it before I went on to do other ones. Um, so some of the things I've learned for, first, before I put the... Uh, the thread in for the tail and the mane, I thought, oh, it'll be cute to have um, like a little saddle. Uh, but once you get the thread and stuff in, part of the saddle's covered up. I'm not sure I, I love it. Um, I also thought it would be cute to put um, some little black jewels sort of uh, on the hooves. I had gone in and used black soot um, distress ink to kind of color the hoofs um, a black and I don't I'm not really in love with how that looked um, so I've gone back and done one or two with a marker and, and I have to do the rest of them and I'll show you those in a minute uh, and then I, I put some some uh, threads and, and yarn and stuff in this one uh, you can see I used this uh, kind of black yarn it's like three ply and after I got it uh, threaded, I, I undid the plies so that I had had several, you know, several little plies here that were about the same thickness as this orange, uh, this dark orange um, embroidery yarn, embroidery floss that I used. So that's what's on that. 
Um, and it's okay. I, I thought the Monarch Butterfly might look better, um, but I, I really don't love it. But, but it's okay, and, and I learned from it. So that was the first one. So here's the second one I did. And I used, on this one, I used this really pretty uh, yarn that I had left over from a crochet project. Oh, thread. Uh, but I love the variegated. I think it's pretty. Um, it was a lot easier to thread through because it wasn't nearly as thick. Even though it looks really fluffy, the, the part that is the actual string is pretty thin. So it went, it went through the needle and the holes in the horse pretty easily. And so on this one, you can see I went back and used a Sharpie to um, color in the hooves and it looks a lot better than it did with the Distress Ink because the Distress Ink just wasn't dark enough. So I like that. I like the, the really kind of fuzzy thread. I thought that was cute. Um, he's covered up here, but I, I added like a little dot for an eye. Um, so I like, I like that he's got a little eye, even though it's kind of covered up by his mane. And instead of putting the decoration where the saddle would be, which is here, but it would be covered up by the mane, um, I just kind of waited until I put the thread in and, and put just a decoration here. It's, you know, it's, it's not really anything. It's just something to fancy it up a little bit. So it's, it's not really a saddle because it's in the wrong place. Um, so I just put something on it. I, and I'll show you a few. I've chosen some buttons and things for other ones. This was actually a wooden button and it has a little flat, uh, you know, sticky kind of pearl on it. But I used the glue to hold it in place anyway. So we've got that one. And I'm gonna set that one over here and let me show you where I am and we'll pick one to work on. So these are all of them and I've, I've just chosen buttons. The buttons are just laying on top. Um, I've chosen buttons for them and I've chosen embroidery floss or yarn to use. Um, I, I wanted them all to be different so I didn't want to reuse the same yarn in any of them. So I was looking through my scraps and I have a lot more embroidery floss than I do, excuse me, than I do fancy yarn. So I used up kind of the fancy yarn and then the rest of them are just gonna be um, sort of heavy duty embroidery yarn or, or floss. And so I've just kind of planned them. Uh, a couple of them, I think I've put eyes on, like you can see I put the eyes on this one but I haven't uh, gone over the hooves on any of them. Um, let's see, let's just pick one. Um, let's see, which, which one is the most fun, I think. Um, I think maybe this one would be fun to work on. So we'll work on that one. That one's got a couple of little buttons. So you can see it's got a little silver button. And then this was a button too, uh, but I've cut the, the back up of it off. Uh, using some pliers. So I just go in with my wire cutter pliers and, you know, chop it off. Okay, so this one needs, you can see I used the black soot and it's not very dark. So I really would just like it to be a little darker. So I'm just going to go in with my Sharpie and kind of color that in a little more just so his hoof looks like there's something to it and then we'll put a little eye in as well you know this doesn't have to be perfect it's it's just the suggestion of a hoof i mean these are not anywhere near lifelike they're just you know the shape of a horse so, and remember, we're just going to make magnets out of them. So I'm going to put a magnet on the back. You can see I've got a little bit of cardstock sticking up there that I didn't quite get trimmed off. To cover the back. 
This one looks a little better than some of them. Some of them, it just seemed like once I put it on there, it didn't quite fit. Um, but I drew, I only drew one template. Uh, and then, of course, each of them, because, because they're cut out of dough, are, you know, is going to be slightly different. Each one is going to be slightly different. So I just cut uh, the, the basic... I just put it down on, on a piece of old cardstock, traced it, and then cut inside of it uh, and held it up and realized it was still a little big. So I, I cut it down some just so that it would fit because it just kind of cleans up the back. I mean, it's still not fabulous on the back, but it is the back. You know, nobody's going to see it, but I'd like it to be finished. I just want it to look like it's finished. Okay, so I'm liking that better. And I think he needs a little eye, so I'm just gonna go in. Let's see, there's his ear. I'm just gonna go in and put a dot. Doesn't have to be much. Just something so it looks like he has a little eye there. Even if it gets covered up, I'll know it's there. Okay, all right. So the only trick uh, to this was, of course, <laughs> getting it to thread through the hole, which was, I used a large needle and a, a threader. Um, and I kind of, let's see, it's about how long I wanted. Uh, I I gave myself some extra room, so I, I wasted a little bit of the thread um, just because when I was pulling it through, I wanted to loop it and pull it back, and it was just easier. This needle's a little long. Um, but when I use the shorter needles, of course, uh, they have much smaller eyes, so it's really hard to get the yarn to go through the eye. Well, and here I say this, and I'm having trouble threading this. Let's try this end. I have broken two threaders <laughs> because I, I tried to pull through a yarn that was really just too thick. And this one's gonna go through. But I oh, see this has kind of some bigger slubs and bigger and smaller pieces. That's a little bit bigger, smaller. Okay, so we're gonna thread it through uh, and make a loop and then thread the ends through the loop. You want the loop on the front um, so that when you pull it, uh, you can see on this one better, I think. You want the loop on the front so that when you pull it, you can pull it down to the front. If you put the loop on the back, it's gonna wanna go to the back. So put the loop on the front, and then I just pulled it through and kinda held it out of the way and went back through and just made sure that I held on Hold on to one end here so that there's a loop. So I have my loop and it's at the front. Um, the orange one, you can see I did a piece of black yarn and a piece of the orange. And for the tail, I did two. And so I kept, I just kept threading them through to do more um, because it didn't look like it was quite full enough. And I feel like that's probably where we're gonna be with this tail. See, that's only two little things on the tail. And you can see it's quite long. I, I probably could have cut a lot less, um, but it just seems like it was easier to work with when it was longer. I probably didn't need it quite as long as it is. So that's probably still even a little too long, but it'll give me a good measure. So I'll try that. Let's put another piece through there. Um, and that's really all I did on the other one. I, I put through um, one of the things of black and then undid the, the strands. And then I put through um, one of the oranges and I just looked at it. Oh gosh, I just threaded that without the threader, yay. Um, one of the oranges and then I decided it wasn't enough. And I, uh, oops, and I went from the wrong direction, see? I'm talking and I'm not watching what I'm doing. Um, and so, and I just decided it wasn't enough, so I put in, you know, another piece or two. Um, so that's probably what we'll do with this, is I'll just put in a few pieces until 
it seems like it's enough. Um, but I want those threaded together, so we're gonna undo that loop. See if we can get these all. See if we can get our hominy grits all going in the same direction. Right. Not that that makes sense, but it's a line from one of my favorite movies, which is Anti Mame with Rosalind Russell. Love that movie. And that's just one of the lines from it. So my husband and I. I've watched that movie many, many, many times. <laughs> it's our favorite movie. I'm having trouble getting this through there. <laughs> See, it looks... It's just because it's fuzzy. You know, you don't realize. Aha! Success. Okay. I hear thundering around upstairs. Cats must be playing. Let's see how that looks. That's a little fuller. I know I'm thinking maybe it's going to need a couple more for the tail. Yeah, I think maybe it needs needs one more. One, two. I'm giving it about a third longer. Just, just to give myself room, room to work there. If I can get that to actually thread again. Uh oh, must be living right. Okay. Hold that to the side, push this one through as well. All right. And I'm going to undo that again because I want them all to be together. I don't know, I feel like my hands are in the way. You probably can't even really tell what I'm doing, which is really just fussing with getting the thread <laughs> in through the loops, right? So there's, oh, have I gone through? There we go. Three loops. Get all the threads through there. When it's not fuzzy, it's a little easier when you're using just the plain embroidery full of floss. That was a little easier to work with. Okay. That seems right. Let's see if I can tug it. I've gotten so much in there now, it doesn't necessarily wanna, wanna tug down here. But just, you know, just keep working at it. You can work it through there. There we go. Just gotta find the find the right one to pull on. Aha, that was it. There we go. That seems better. So trim that down a little. That still might be a little too long, but, you know. Okay. Might put a little glue, just, I'm thinking I might just put a dollop of glue on that to hold it in place. When I'm done, I think I'm gonna do the other things first. We'll just make sure. All right, so, find the end of that. Um, you, you see the idea, though. It's really just a matter of um, looping it through and 
and doing uh, doing just a little loop to hold it. And I think, I mean, if you know that you're gonna want a couple, it might be easier to do two at once if they're not very thick. So we'll try that with this one. Cut one more just so we have the right length. Might be too long, but. We'll see, I wonder if I can go ahead and thread two at once. That would be good. We can get two of them threaded at once, that would make our lives easier. Of course, if I can get it through the needle at all, that would be good. I've got my threader there if I need it, but it seemed like a while ago it was going right through without the threader. Ah, like that. Okay. All right, so I've got one piece through. Let's see if I can go ahead and thread a second one through there so we can do two at once. And then it's just a matter of threading them all through um, and fussing with it until you get until you get the the main and the tail and everything that's the right the right size I'm gonna have to get my threader I really was hoping I could just get this through and we'd be ready to go try one more time just not liking me <laughs> it's funny I did it like three three four times in a row there with the tail but now it doesn't want to go through and it's like no don't make me all right okay just because I've got it frayed here at the end ah that was it okay out a little. All right. I think that might be easier. Yep. Yep, that's going to be easier. And we'll have our, we can do our loop. And we'll be, and we'll be good. Oops, I almost pulled that through. There we go. Just want to make sure you catch that loop. Otherwise, you'll end up having to thread it again. And heaven knows I don't want to have to do that. Because it fights me enough the first time. Two loops there. Oh, hello, kid. Maybe a mistake to have left the door open since I've got yarn out. <laughs> but you just never know. Okay, why isn't that tightening now? There we go. There we go, there we go. Now you just gotta find the right one to tug on. All right. And I want that mane a good deal shorter than that, but it's just so much easier to work with when it's longer, so. It still might be a little long. Okay, that's about right. 
All right, so you get the idea. You just want to make a loop and pull it. And again, I think this seems a little, a little loose. So I'm probably, after I do them all, I'm probably just gonna go through and put like a dot of glue under to hold them in place. Um, so let me do this. And then I will be back uh, to do the last of the decoration. Uh, and and then you get the idea. I mean, I don't I don't think you need to watch me do it ten times. <laughs> um, so I will I will shut off the camera at this point. Um, do all of those, and then we'll come back and put the decoration on, and see how the finished one looks. All right. See you in a minute. Okay, I'm back, um, and I have. Uh, glue. I put a little bit of glue to hold the tail in place because it was kind of going blah everywhere. Uh, and then I have just um, put the mane on and trimmed it. Uh, trimmed this one a little shorter just because I thought because it was so fuzzy, it looked really cute. I thought um, this one was really fuzzy too, so I trimmed it shorter too. Uh, this one is a little bit longer, but it's not as fuzzy, so it seems like a little length would probably be good. Um, so I've trimmed that up, and, and you can still see his eye there. So now it's just a matter of whether or not we want to decorate it. I, th I think he's really cute the way he is, so I don't know about decorating, but I kind of like a little something, you know, a little something, something just to, just to make him fun and special. So I'm thinking that that's what we'll put on there, and, and I kind of like that. Um, so I'm just going to... Just gonna use some glue to stick him on there. I'm gonna use my art glitter glue. Um, I've lost my little tip, so. <laughs> uh, but it seems to be doing okay without the without the little metal tip. It doesn't come out too fast, and and you can still control it pretty well. So it hasn't given me trouble yet. Um, maybe I'll find the tip. Okay, let's try to get a little bit of that extra glue off of there. So I think that's about where I want that. Um, and then for little pieces, if you want them in a particular place, instead of putting the glue on here and then trying to drop it in the right place, it's easier, I think, to put the glue where you want it to go and then drop it on there um, because then the glue is where it's supposed to be and if it doesn't get quite straight you can kind of just move it around a little for a few seconds anyway until it's there okay so that's our horse um, once that's dry i'll give it a few minutes and then i'll just i'm just going to glue a magnet on the back I'm probably using construction adhesive, which I'm gonna have to go like dig out from my my husband's um, my husband's uh, workshop area because I think I loaned him mine, <laughs> so I think he has it. Uh, now I have to go find it. But uh, so that's that. You could you know you could do other things with it. You could put it on the cover of a journal uh, if you wanted to. That might be what we do with some of those butterflies. Um, I think some of the other things it might be really cute as a pin you could put a you could glue a pin back on it um, and give it to somebody to wear as a pin um, it might look cute uh, as a necklace I think it might might be a little delicate for a necklace maybe depends when it's really dry um, and I mean like cured for a, a several days so I'm thinking uh, it's warmer today. After I'm done with these, I might put them on a tray and set them outside in the sunshine to just really totally dry out. Um, it's supposed to be 87 today here in the Valley of the Sun, uh, and it's only March. Um, but then later in the week, it's going to drop back down to the 60s. So that's pretty typical for March here. It's it's one day it's it's really warm, and the next day it's not cold, but it's not warm. You know. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to put these out in the sun and let them kind of cure a little because it is dough um, and, it, and it holds up pretty well, but you know, you, you don't want to abuse it, right? So just whatever you're going to do with it, be sure it's something that's not going to get knocked around too much because it can break. 
um, since since we put all of the paper over it uh, and, and glued a backing on it, it's not as likely uh, to break because uh, it's got things holding it together. So you could probably, you know, you could probably be a little rougher with it, but certainly I think a pen would be cute. I think the front of a journal would be cute. Um, it would be, you know, as super cute as a magnet, which is what I'm gonna do with it. Uh, so anything along those lines, I, I think you'd be good, um, you know, or, or maybe just fun. You know, the kids could play with them. Uh, if you if you paint them rather than spending all the time decoupaging them, uh, it would go a lot faster, uh, and then the kids could the kids could paint them and then and then play with them. So that that might be fun too. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed our time together. I'll I'll bring these back. Um, and I still have seven more to do. Uh, so the, the, picture, the picture that will go with this video will probably have all of those done. Um, depends on how long it takes me. <laughs> uh, so we'll, we'll see. But I think these are going to be really cute little magnets. I hope you enjoyed our time. Um, don't forget about things that you did when you were kids like salt dough. You know, that, that can be kind of fun. Uh, and I think maybe we'll do some other projects with some of the other things that, that I made uh, yesterday. So thanks for joining me. If you found some value here, please hit like and subscribe. I really appreciate that. Um, you know, I put out videos two to three times a week. Um, usually Monday, we have Motivational Mondays, which is a collaging video with a quote. Wednesday, we have upcycling, recycling, using what you have kind of projects, um, sometimes building ephemera for junk journals. And then on Saturdays, I try to give you an update on my large mixed media project right now um, or do something with, with a junk journal layout. So I hope you will join me uh, until I see you again. Remember, use what you have to make your life more beautiful. Have a great day. Bye.